Last night was actually much better than Saturday night. Uh, Saturday uh, what was a peaceful protest uh, turned uh, somewhat problematic when a very small group of people decided to vandalize uh, police cars and set a couple of them on fire and vandalize some property. Um, by and large, uh, there weren't uh, major confrontations or major arrests. We had about 57 arrests. Only 13 of those 57 were city of Miami residents. Um, yesterday uh, was essentially flawless. Uh, we had protesters that were, we implemented a, uh, we implemented a curfew and we announced it with community leaders throughout the day. Uh, and we kept consistent with our message. So the protesters did a magnificent job of, you know, they, they walked 13 miles protesting throughout our city. We gave them the complete ability to walk through our city and even uh, stopped uh, an attempt to loot a CVS on 8th and Biscayne. So uh, they helped our police department tremendously. And our police did a magnificent job of avoiding anything that could provoke uh, the crowd um, and, and creating unnecessary confrontations. Let's talk a little bit. One of the things that caught my ear there when you were speaking is you said that only 13 of the 57 arrests were Miami residents. Where did the other people come from? And was there anything in their profiles that led you to believe that they had been organized and deployed by outside agitators or influencers? It's too early for us to tell. Um, some of them did come from out of town. Some of them came from, like you said, other parts of Miami-Dade County. Uh, some of them came from Broward. Uh, what I can tell you is that the ones who were looting and who were uh, vandalizing came with that specific purpose. And the reason why I know that is because I saw them and they had book bags with particular devices, uh, whether they be sledgehammers or whether they be batons, not just sticks that you pick up from the ground, which is something that you normally see when there's loot, looting and rioting. Uh, these were people that came equipped uh, with paint spray cans, uh, you know, incendiary devices to set cars on fire. Uh, so it's clear that they were coordinating and that they were, um, you know, that they were there to do damage and to create chaos. Yeah. So whoever they were and whatever their motivations, they came prepared uh, to right. do violence and to destroy property and to vandalize. Your right. city, as all cities across this country, is trying to um, lever ourselves open. How much does this violence set back that process? It sets it back, but you know, really this is an ongoing effort. We, we have to recognize, the first thing we have to do is recognize that there's a problem, always, in, in conflict resolution. I think our police chief was one of the first chiefs to condemn the actions of that officers. And we, by press conference, condemned as a city commission and as a city mayor, mayor and, and police chief, the actions of the three other officers who have yet to be arrested for standing by and doing nothing when that officer had his knee on the throat of George Floyd. I think the second thing is we have to take another hard look at ourselves and see what can we be doing? Is it uh, more implicit bias training of, of uh, you know, incoming officers, of already existing officers? Are we doing a good enough job of weeding officers that have negative complaints against them? Those are the questions that I think we have to ask ourselves and we have to also listen to ideas from others uh, across the country.